the number you have reached, 911, has been changed to a non-published number. You're listening to UCW Radio. In your face. Welcome to another segment of the UCW Radio Show. This is your host, Lou, a.k.a. Falcon Co. Paris. And I want to thank all of our listeners for their continued support just by listening to the show. You tune in, and we continue to bring the best of the best uh, to, the, to the table uh, because we are entertainment redefined. Uh, I need to let our listeners know that uh, before we get into anything, I need to say this. We did about a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago, we opened the door for sponsorship opportunities. So sponsors, advertisers, marketers that want to align with the UCW radio show, it's very simple. Just go to ucwmagazine.com, find out how you can do it. You can give us a call at 323-952-4369. The number again is 323-952-4369. And find out how you can align yourself with the UCW radio show. In just a little while, we're going to have a very special guest on the show, And it's rare that this man has a platform to really express himself without being criticized by the media. And we all know how the media works sometimes. Or without select excerpts of what he's saying being used out of context. We're not doing that here. And I'm glad that we are going to have him on the show. He's actually a great guy uh, for those of you that don't know him. He's a great guy. I'm saying that now. Uh, so that as we go forward, you know my thoughts. Uh, now I need to um, to let our listeners know again. You know we want we want to connect with you. We want you to be involved in the show. Uh, we're 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 doing a brief here uh, just so we can get to him because he's on hold. So we're trying to uh, zoom through this. But I want to let our listeners know we want you to call in with your questions, your comments. You know, uh, connect with the show. Be a part of the show. Be a part of the team. We're looking for you to be a part of it. You can uh, you can also call us at 323-952-4369 and just be a part of the UCW radio show. And if you're on Twitter, you can shoot me out some questions or comments uh, while we're live. Even if we're not live, uh, we'll read off the questions or comments. You'll know who's going to be on the show. Just go to ucwmagazine.com and find out uh, there. Just uh, You'll see we have a calendar there. So you can see who's on the show. Uh, my Twitter name is Luis Velasquez. That's L-O-U-I-S-V-E-L-A-Z-Q-U-E-Z. Follow me and tweet away. Now, without further ado, uh, he's on hold, so let's patch in the father of Lindsay Lohan. Here is Michael Lohan. Michael, uh, thanks thanks for coming on the, the UCW radio show. I know uh, you're running in between meetings, and you wanted to make sure we weren't rushed, and I appreciate you taking out the time in, in between your busy schedule to be with us this afternoon. Well, thank you for having me today, Lou. Uh, excellent. Uh, you know, we always, and I always say this during the show, that we appreciate the time that our guests put aside, and this is just an, one example of, you know, the time that has to be taken out to do the show and uh, and, I, and it's it's great that you're you're here, um, Michael. You know what? I think a lot of our listeners they they're gonna they they know you by being Lindsay Lohan's father. There's there's no going around and no escaping it. But the, the reality is, there's a lot more to you than you just being Lindsay Lohan's father. You know, you you've done a lot in your life on your own terms, and and you created. You know, you you weren't you didn't just sprout up and say, okay, you know, now you're a father. You've done some amazing things in your life. So maybe we can actually start at the beginning with you and tell your story. Well, yeah, sure. But, I mean, it, it, it still all boils down to one thing, that I really believe that God puts us in a position, whether I'm Lindsay's dad or just Michael Lohan, to try to make a difference and try to have, you know, some kind of effect on other people. Of course. Um, you know, I grew up in a very humble, humble family and a humble lifestyle. Even though my uh, my mom and my my grandfather, her side of the family, were very wealthy, um, I raised my kids in a different way. I mean, I, I taught them to to work hard and to respect what they made and respect other people. And I think that was kind of evident with Lindsay as she grew up. Um, you know, through the from the parent trap right through Mean Girls. But you know, unfortunately, we get caught up in the world. Lindsay may 
have, as I did, mm-hmm. and uh, and we get off track. But you know, it's it's not a matter of where what you've done in your life; it's where how you how you make a difference, how you change it, and where you go. Well, there's no doubt about that. No doubt yeah. about it. You know, and if you've been through some rough pastures during your time. Sure. Uh, and you've been, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it, but you've been criticized for this, that, and the other thing. But that's not what we're, where we're here today for. We're here to uh, talk about your journey because even uh, what you've done for your daughter and what you've done in your life, I think it's, it's amazing. See, but the, the problem is, Lou, mm-hmm. is that when the tabloids and the, uh, you know, just people in general get a hold of anything that's put out there, they twist it and it gets distorted and. That, you know, the, people feed on the negative, not the positive, and that's the problem with the world today. Mm-hmm. If we if we really related to the, the good things that are happening in, in the world, the things that need to change in a good way, then it would be a different place. But it's a lot different now than what it was when I was growing up, mm-hmm. and we have to just adapt to it and try to you know roll with the punches. Mm-hmm. And uh, unfortunately, every day it's just, you know it's a, just a boxing match. It really is. Oh, yeah. You live like a, a like a goose. You just have to let the water hit you and roll, roll off your feathers. Especially but, if if you're if you're out there like that, especially in the entertainment industry, you know you're you're exposed. So yeah, you're right. The tabloids, the TMZs of the world, uh, all these uh, these uh, media outlets, they're looking for the bad things so they can show it. Whether that there's a, a killing here or this that or you know just related to you, well. Michael Lohan said this. He said that, and they're not. They're they're, they're distorting things, and they do well, see, distort it. And I hate to interrupt, but Lou, see, that's a, you're right. That's a problem mm-hmm. because it's not what Michael Lohan said or did, or what Lindsay said or did. Because most of the time they get it wrong. Right. They never come back to try to. They never check their facts. I mean, reporting and the freedom of the press has changed so much. I really don't think that you know when the founding fathers wrote wrote the Constitution. And they wrote the first, you know, the first amendment, uh, with freedom of speech. They didn't intend on the, on that amendment to, to really be used the way it is today. I mean, you have people like Perez Hilton and some people that take it and bring it to another level mm-hmm. that's really, you know, it's, it, it, it's criminal to a degree. Yeah. And, you know, when you're, when you're the place we're in, you have to expect that people are going to watch you and they're going to attack you. And that's why you have to be careful in what you do. And, you know, there were times in my life where I wasn't careful. And, you know, like you said at the beginning, people don't know me. They don't know where I came from. And they just feed on the reports that are out there. And, you know, if they only knew the truth, it would be a different story. I, I didn't go to jail for fraud or anything like that. I, I went to jail for, for not telling on the people I was doing business with. And, I, you know, to me, that's integrity. That's the way I was brought up. Yeah, and you, you, you know, brought up in an environment, to, you got to keep your mouth shut, and that's it when it comes to certain things. And that's all. Yeah, well, you know, people have choices. You know, mm-hmm. it depends what kind of a case it is. Either you're going to get killed, or you're going to just do the right thing because you think it's right. And you know, I did the right thing because it was right. Instead of you know nine other people suffering, mm-hmm. um, why should they suffer and their family suffer when I could just you know take the brunt of it and you know just live up to what I had to as a man. Right. You know, and then it, I mean, that leads into what happened with Lindsay when she was doing the parent trap. I mean, she's on the set. What, what father wouldn't do what I did? Your kid's on the set of a movie. Mm-hmm. You just got done doing the three years in jail. You're out for four years. You get a phone call. Your, your child is in the hospital with a horrible asthma attack, very sick, and you want to be there for them. Of and you've been out there a number of times before, and your parole officer says, no, you can't go. You know, I said to him, I said, I have to go. And he said, well, you do what you have to do, and I'll do what I have to do. So I went to be there for my kids, and I got arrested. And for doing that, they put me in jail for two years. I mean, would any father, I mean, do what I did? I, I, I would say that any father that didn't do what I did is a coward. Well, I mean, you, you, your kid's in danger. If something happens, your kid's in the hospital, especially. Yeah, you're gonna do whatever you know, whatever you need to do, regardless of the consequences. You know, because that's you being a good parent and and being there for your kids. You know, for someone to criticize you for that, and more importantly, for for a parole officer to say, hey, you know what, you do this, you're gonna go see your kid. Well, you're gonna be in trouble. Why? You know, the funny part is, Lou, yeah. if that parole officer was in my position and he had to make a choice, what would he do? Exactly what you did. Exactly. 
So why don't people put themselves in this in, in the shoes of the person making that decision and live by that law? Because sometimes you have people that you know for, for whatever reason they look at they'll look at you like a little differently than they would look at some an average Joe. Because sure, they like to beat you up. Yeah, you I can, mean, they do the same thing to Dina, my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. I mean, she look. I'm not going to agree with all the things she's done in her life, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure she won't agree with me and some of the things I've done. But you know, there were a lot of times where Dina had to step to the plate and say things and do things, and people didn't agree with it. Mm -hmm. But that's a mother. That's what a mother does. Mm -hmm. So you know what they can say and do what they want to. It doesn't matter what the world sees. Mm -hmm. It matters what God sees. Because he knows the truth. Everyone else doesn't. Well, at the end of the day, when you go home, you put your, your head down in your pillow. It's you. you. It's you. You have to deal with what you have to deal with on your own. Now, <laughs> you know, be, be, being being out there and uh, in the public eye like this, you know, you, your ex-wife, your, your, your daughter, everything, anything you do, you know, it's going to be you know, scrutinized, criticized, ripped apart, everything. But, you know, beyond all that, you, know, you you guys are a family, you know, even though, you know, you're divorced and everything, but still, you know, you, you're still doing stuff for your family that you feel is the right thing to do. And, again, no matter what you do, you're going to be criticized for, I guess, the bad things that you do, but that's not what this show is about. Well, no, it's not. Yeah. As long as you do the right thing and you know you're doing the right thing, that's all that matters. I mean, mm -hmm. even in the book of Joshua... And you know, I went to Bible college. Right. In the book of Joshua, it says, as for me and my family, I'll serve the Lord. I'll do what I think is right. Mm. And sometimes we have to pay a price for it. You know, um, look at me. Look at Jesus. He didn't die for stuff. He died for people. Mm -hmm. And it's all about people, the people you love and the people around you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's it. we all make choices. We have to deal with them. Mm -hmm. I made mine. I made some wrong ones. Mm -hmm. I had to deal with it. Lindsay made her decisions, and she has to deal with them. And, you know, and, and I'll be very open and honest on, right now. You know, some of us get it right, and sometimes it takes a little longer for others to get it right themselves. Mm -hmm. And my daughter is a wonderful, wonderful, blessed, blessed girl with a great heart. And unfortunately, you know, the wrong people came into her life, including some of these doctors that prescribe pre prescription medication. And I have a real, real problem. I have an indifference with that. Because they just, they write scripts just that they don't know. Someone, they just diagnose them on the spot, and write a script and say, you're bipolar, you're, you have ADD, and you need this and that. And before you know it, they turn them into another person. And uh, unfortunately, when Tina and I got divorced, and Lindsay was, that didn't sit well with her. Um, she went to doctors, they gave her the medication. And you know what? My daughter is still the same person at heart, but she is not the girl that I raised. She's not the girl that I love to hold and I want to be with. I mean, there's a blank, empty feeling when she's there. Mm -hmm. But I know that Lindsay is still there and that she'll get it right and she's going to turn it all around. Well, you know, people, you know, Michael, you know how people are. You know, people evolve. You go through turbulent times in your life and you just learn from any mistakes that happen. And with these doctors in Hollywood, yeah, you know, they don't, they, they, they'll write scripts and do that just to keep the ball rolling. Because yep. it's, it's in their best interest to just write it and not even argue with it. But at the end of the day, you know, don't they have to adhere to an oath? I'm, I'm sorry, I lost you, Lynn. No, I said, at, this, at the end of the day, these doctors, don't they have to adhere, adhere to an oath? To do, you know. Yeah, but they don't, you know, you're so right. You know what? They're doctor feel-goods. Mm -hmm. They're doctors that want a, a big name a, a, as a client. They lead other people to them to say, Lindsay Lohan's my client, or this and that, and they hope to run into them in the office, or mm -hmm. they think they're doing the right thing. But at the end of the day, they're wrong. Mm -hmm. They're too, they're too liberal with their, their, mm -hmm. the, the way they write prescriptions. Mm -hmm. They destroy lives. Look, at, let, mm -hmm. let me ask you a question. Yeah. As of late, not even as of late, Start back with Judy Garland mm -hmm. and Marilyn Monroe, and then go to John Belushi, and then go to, go, I mean, go, even lately. You can go Keith recent, go to Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, Adam Goldstein. Yep. All the people, it's not illegal drugs, it's mm -hmm. prescription drugs that are killing these people. Right. It's what doctors write for them and the abuse of those drugs, because it's harder. Look, being a drug counselor and a minister, I deal with people like this all the time. Mm -hmm. There's a rehab out on Long Island called Seafield, mm -hmm. which is an unbelievable place. 
and uh, the, the, the director is a guy named Mark Epley, and I place people there all the time. He doesn't even care if people have money or not, mm -hmm. he, and it's very expensive. It can cost up to 30000 a month, but he takes people in because he knows the problem. Mm -hmm. He knows that most of the people that are coming in now are people that are addicted to prescription drugs, and it's at the hands of doctors, not drug dealers. Isn't that funny? How, you know, you, you have the war on drugs, and they're fighting uh, cocaine, marijuana, heroin, all this other stuff. But, uh, you know, in reality, how many kids and from the suburbs on down are addicted to uh, prescription drugs? Yep. It's horrible. You know, it's adult, horrible. Adults and, and, and kids, you know, they, they find this stuff in the medicine cabinet. They're popping pills and things are happening. Yep. You know? Well, you know what? The more you probe it show and some other, uh, some other networks, even like... ABC mm -hmm. are looking into this and they're going to be doing investigative reports and you're going to see how easy it is for people to get drugs, mm -hmm. um, prescription drugs that are even more harmful than, than I'm not condoning illegal drugs like mm -hmm. cocaine, heroin or ecstasy or anything, but the prescription drugs people are getting these days are even more, it's harder to come off them and detox from them than the drugs that they're getting on the street. Yeah. And it's it's a sin. It really is. They can even buy them on the internet. I mean, it's it's insane the way things, the doors, the the, the gates have opened. I mean, it's the gates of hell as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe they'll start locking, you know, kind of like putting their, their thumbs down on stuff because, you know, you have too many people that are getting addicted to this stuff. You know, and a lot of times the pharmaceutical companies, they're, they're pushing doctors to go and prescribe XYZ drugs to um, certain patients too. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that, Lou, yeah. because there's so many incentives for doctors to write scripts for new drugs, mm -hmm. whether it's a Billify or this one or that one. I mean, it's insane. I mean, they're actually making doctors write prescriptions so they make extra money, and it's 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 disgusting. I see it in my own family. I see it with other people that we know, and it's it's horrible. But you know what? We fight the battle every day. I'm going to tell people what I believe, what I think. It's not about being a friend to my daughter, it's being a father first, mm -hmm. and I want to make a difference. I want to change people's lives, and I want people to realize that through my experience or Lindsay's experience, that our job, or anyone else, mm -hmm. it's our job to let people know mm -hmm. what's happened in our life and how we got it right, or how we're trying to get it right, just to help them themselves. But people aren't that honest. They don't want to sit down and be contrite and say, you know what, look, it, it's... It's true. I mean, that's how I am. That's what I do. People have a hard time stepping to the plate and just being accountable or admitting things. Well, look, you're sitting here. You're admitting your shortcomings. You're admitting the, the mistakes you made, which, you know, it takes a big man to do that. A lot of people won't do it. But how do you get to, to your actual, you know, ultimate truth if you don't admit the mistakes that you've made? Exactly. I mean, but that's up to everyone. I mean, yeah. you have to make a choice yourself. People can live behind that veil, and they can they can be a hypocrite and say one thing and do another. I'm not going to do that. And I, it, it, you know what? If my daughter doesn't like me or argues with me over what I say or I do or what I tell her, mm -hmm. then so be it. That's my kid. I love her. And they, you know what? It's more important to be a father than a friend. And I'm not going to do that. I don't care what people think of me or what I say. I don't go on on the radio or on TV to try to get publicity for myself. I never get paid for what I do. People get paid for the interviews all the time. Mm -hmm. I never get paid. I never took a penny from my daughter. No matter what I did for her, no matter what projects I put together, never got one red cent. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't want it. But you know, it's about helping people and loving your family and, first. And at the end of the day, and I'm glad that you said that, at the end of the day, minus all the celebrity-ness and everything else, you know, mm -hmm. and all that stuff involved there, and I said this earlier, at the end of the day, it's you and your family, you and your daughter. Okay? That's it. And it's not you oh, my, and my, my daughter that's a celebrity and then we're buddy-buddy and we're hanging out. No, it's you and your daughter, and, and, and that that's it. Because now you, you being... You trying to do the right thing as a father, yeah, yeah, you're gonna have people out there saying this, that, but it doesn't matter because they're not they're not walking in your shoes. Let them walk a mile in your shoes, and and then they can come back and say, oh yeah, you know what, Michael's not that bad of a guy. No, no, okay. you know what, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I wish people would see it that way, but it doesn't matter if they do or don't. Yeah. It's um, I just know what I'm doing is right. I'm I'm not perfect. Right. No one, no one, no one. Everyone falls short of the glory of God. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's very simple. No one is perfect. Jesus was not us. 
Mm-hmm. And every day we have a shortcoming, even mm-hmm. if it's the way we think or how we feel about other people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, uh, people should really go and look in the Bible and, and really read Romans 3.23 and really realize that, that, you know what, if you don't live a perfect life and no one can, Mm-hmm. How can you actually criticize someone else? You can. You can. How are you? It's like you're living in a glass house. You're throwing stones. How does that work? <laughs> well, it doesn't work. Yeah, it, it, doesn't. it doesn't work. It doesn't. Just be honest. I mean, I'll, I'll go into John Gosselin. I even told John, who's a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. I said, "Look, John, you create your own problems mm-hmm. instead of trying to, you know, you know, just dodge or avoid situations or or not being truthful about them. Be honest." Tell people the truth. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm 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 going through a divorce. I can date who I want. What if I sleep with someone or not? That's up to me. It's not up to you. I don't have to tell you what I do. But when you start to sugarcoat things and you you, you lie about them, then it, there's a problem. So it all comes back to you. It's karma. Yeah. Really Be honest. Bad. Let people know what the truth is. It's so you know when I came out of prison. The first thing, the first thing my lawyer said to me when people, the, the paparazzi was waiting outside, is, "What are you going to say?" And I said, "What am I going to say? I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him the truth. I was wrong. I screwed up. I drank. I hit a telephone pole. I'm guilty. Mm-hmm. Did I lose my temper? Did I beat my brother-in-law up? Yeah, I did all these things wrong. Now, what do you want to tell me? What do you want to say? When you tell them exactly what they're going to hit you with, what are they left with? No ammunition." That's right. They'll, they'll go and dig for something else, you know. But that—that's the way life is. But you know, you're absolutely correct that if you—if you tell the truth, it's, it's hard to screw that up. That's right. You know, because it's hard for someone to say, "Well, you know, you did this." Well, I told the truth. I this is it is what it is, and there's nothing I can do about it. I did what that's I did. Right. I understand it. I know my mistakes. But this is the way. This is this is it. So, for but some, Lou, you know, it all boils down to one thing, mm-hmm. and it's in the book of John. If you are without sin, then you can cast the first stone. Yep. If you haven't done anything wrong, then talk. Mm-hmm. But no one is no one is in a position to do that. But if you've done something wrong, if you've been angry with someone, yelled at someone, had a bad thought, you misled someone, you mm-hmm. lied to someone, you sinned. Mm-hmm. Then you have no right to do that to anyone else. Yeah, you know, you have no right to question anybody. And you know the thing and, that's, that's, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just want to say something, especially in the case of of uh, people that are out there and, and they have uh, you know, quote unquote celebrity status or or they're out there in the media okay people you know you have people just watching TV they hear things they hear the radio and they hear this and they say okay well this is a bad person and that's you know uh, it's funny to me because they don't a person doesn't even know judge the person not, on TV not let you be judged right I mean how are you going to sit there and cast uh, and cast judgment on somebody that you don't know. Yeah. Unless I know someone, like if I, yeah, if I know someone and I know that they they're not good people, I'll say it because I can because I know the person and I, they showed me their colors. Until that happens, you can't pass judgment on somebody. You can't. That's right. You know, because I mean, if, they, if it happens to you, then uh, people people will be bent out of shape. You know, but then some people fight back. Like um, I, I think the the Black Eyed Peas guy uh, did that to that Perez Hilton, Hilton, right? He did it at an event. Yep. You know, but then stuff like that happens. And well, I'm sure look I'm at a person like look at a person like Perez Hilton himself. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're filing a suit this week on him that he's not going to win. This guy is out there. He he just made a comment about about uh, Jacqueline Smith trying to commit suicide when she was never even there. He mm-hmm. filmed the video of, of of Liam Neeson's wife Natasha Richardson's death, and he put it on the internet. Oh, nice. That's, that's this nice. is a horrible, horrible thing. A, a family that's even close, was close to my family. Mm-hmm. That woman that shot the parent trap with my daughter and played her mother mm-hmm. for seven months, and we live with them and spend time with them. You don't treat people like that. You know what, you you know really what he don't. is? He, he's an opportunist. And guys like guys like that that, that do stuff like that or are or, or, or in that position because now they, they have the masses behind them and like, okay, because I'm going to tell you gossip. But, Lou, who cares about those masses? Who cares about the people behind Perez Hilton? What kind of people would be behind a man like that? Oh, would that, cater to him? Oh, yeah, but that, that was my point, is that he has people blindlessly following him because he's telling them gossip, but, you know, who, whose lives is he affecting? You know, you're going to go in and interfere in someone's, you know, private situation, a funeral? What kind of pe- but what kind of people are they to follow something like that? You know, your friend who introduced me to you, Keith Walker, taught mm-hmm. me a lot about that. Really, he did. 
Yeah, well, he's been through some stuff. Yeah, he sure has. And he taught me, you know, not to worry about that kind of stuff. Let it roll off your back. Don't worry about it. And just live your life and live a godly life. And then, you know, it's all a matter of karma. What you give is what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, I have a saying, the greater the, greater the level, the bigger the devil. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're even closer to God, like in the book of Job, mm -hmm. where Job was such a godly man, you know, you're going to be tested. You're going to be tempted. There's going to be a lot of hard things that come into your life. But you have to, that's only because you're worthy of withstanding these kind of things. Mm -hmm. I would never think that anyone in my life could ever deal with the things I have. I wouldn't want them to. I'd, I'd much rather go and suffer for them than than ever have them suffer themselves. And then you, again, as I said earlier, you've been through some stuff and you're getting through it. And the difference is that I, that I see, like, with, with the stuff that you've been through, is that you're not sitting in a corner crying about it. You're not sitting there, you know, uh, you know, feeling, having this self-pity. You know, no, you're, no, you're but out I, there moving forward in your life. You know, you're trying to do things, getting things together. You want to be there for your kid. You know, that's what a good father does. Yep. But still, people have, as I said, you know, and the people who are going to be listening to this are going to they're going to say, "Well, Michael Lohan's a Bible toting guy." Okay, well, let him be a Bible toting guy. If that if this is bringing you where you need to be in your life, yeah, but I live it. I live it. Right. I can say, I, I you know, what I. I it's not just words, it's action. I do it. You don't see me out in clubs or bars drinking, partying, doing things wrong. I don't do that. People try to twist things and make it look the wrong way, but you don't see that. I mean, when my daughter got robbed, who was the first person she called? Me. I flew out to L.A. I was there for seven days, and they say I don't have a relationship with her? Give me a break. People don't know what the truth is, but I don't care. I really don't care. They don't know who I am, what I have. They say I try to make money off my daughter and this and that. I don't need it. My family owns the number one investment banking firm in North America. They don't know that either, right. but they do. I'm getting on a private jet to go and feed homeless people on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Are they? No. But you know what? It's easier for people to go and, and picture you as some crazy uh, parent that's pushing, that push their kid into entertainment and this and that, and that's that you know, like with, with Gary Coleman and what happened. They're trying to paint that picture of you as what happened with him and his parents. But well, you, that, that's you know, the furthest I, thing from the truth, though. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just trying to you paint the picture so people understand that you know, you, you you're not sitting there waiting for something you know magnificent that so you can benefit from your kid you're not doing that no, you, your no, kid's doing as long as she does well in her life you're happy that's it i wanted to be happy and healthy there you go. and i wanted to be the Lindsay that was in the parent trap and confessions and freaky friday and mean girls that Lindsay, yeah. the girl that that had so much talent and has so much talent and she uses it in the right way how, how about the Lindsay that that you spend holidays with thanksgiving things like that maybe how about the Lindsay that goes to hospitals and and feeds the homeless and and visits kids that mm -hmm. are terminally ill and and dedicates her time to helping people and serving god that's the Lindsay i, I love and i want back you know what i think that's that's going to wind up hopefully that winds up happening for you yeah you know, cause, anyway, uh, you know, so listen, but I'm going to have to get jumping soon because I just got a call from my lawyer and she's coming to meet me and we're going to be announcing the suit about uh, Perez Hilton. Okay, all right. You know, but, I don't, I don't want to keep you, but is there anything else that you want to go over before uh, we wrap this up? No, but any time you want to have me back, I'm welcome to come back. You're a great guy. Keith speaks very highly of you, and I'd love to... Uh, you know, even if I'm in your area, come in and sit down and talk to you. It sounds like a plan. All right, Michael, go do your thing, my friend, and we will have you back on the show uh, in, a, in a little while. But go do your thing, and best of luck with everything, and I'll be speaking to you soon. Thanks, Lou. God bless you, buddy. Same here. Bye-bye. Thank you. What is your major malfunction? All let it be written. So let it be done. Ladies and gentlemen. My mother thanks you, my father thanks you, my sister thanks you, and I thank you.